All of the polar bear levels suck on relic challenges. I don't have anything clever to say. They're just bad. Look at this. Why are you all going after me? Is this a four player match or one against three? Look at this ganging up. What is this? Camden? The other players always aim at you. They all have more powerful charges and they know to the atom how to cancel out whatever move you're trying to do to them. If you're unlucky enough to be left with Rillaroo or Dingadal, you might as well just stop the game. Unless there's a lightning strike or insta-kill weight power up to use, they will use their near infinite stamina in order to cancel the momentum of any charge you hit at them. And by the time you have a charge ready to go again, they've got enough to charge back at you and then cancel your next charge out just to be safe. You know, I mean, I guess you can never be too careful. Most of my attempts running around on this titanic ammunition went two ways. Either like this... Go. Or like this, and I would either run out of time, get knocked off myself, or get super lucky. Twice in a row. Screw it. Second place goes to all of the polar bear levels. All of them. They all suck. All four of the gold relics for all the polar bear stages took me 78 attempts to do, or 58 minutes and 48 seconds. Goodbye. <laughs> This was the part of the game where I nearly quit it forever and decided to make another video. I don't even know where to start. It's a tank battle, but with no cover anywhere, and every single attack is aimed at you. <laughs> I wish I was exaggerating. I have never seen mugging like this before. We're not with Camden gangs anymore. We're with pirates off the coast of Somalia. Do you have any idea how much more manageable this would be if you could just reverse? Because you can't. You're on a bow. All you can do is guff your way in the direction you're facing and very slowly turn around while the enemies are able to play the greatest game of snooker ever recorded by zoo animals and somehow hit you with war ricochets towards the area you will end up. The regular tank stages are bad enough when you miss a shot and have to wait for your bullet to expire before firing again, but at least you can hide behind cover while you wait. But if you miss in Swamp Fox, that's it. Game over. And yes, I know you have a shield that you can activate every few seconds, but for some reason, I swear on my mum that it just doesn't work. I know it's only a few brief frames of invincibility but unless you activate it the absolute instant a shot hits you, it will expire. Is this where Dark Souls 2 got the idea for ADP? I also have every reason to believe that the computer players can use the shield way faster than you without anywhere near the same amount of cooldown. And yes, they know exactly when to activate it. At least 75% of my shots just never cause damage to anyone because of how perfectly they play. And don't even bother using the water mines because they not only float away in one random direction, but every character automatically keeps away from it unless you're extremely lucky. The mines are so useless that in every single attempt of this challenge, the computer players never use them a single time. They always We've seen the gangs in Camden, we've seen the pirates in Somalia, and just when we thought we were safely out of it, along came World War II Germany. It honestly didn't seem to matter which direction I went, where I dropped mines, or when I fired. All the computer players have a soldier wasp hive mind that exists to do nothing except eliminate you. Based on this alone, I'm convinced that the Desert Fox Platinum Relic Challenge was developed for military affairs. It's a simulation for real life war regiment coordination. You want to know why World War III hasn't happened yet and no one dares to start it, it's because we train our soldiers with the Platinum Relic tank game in Crash Bash. Oh look, it's the funny fish game. What? Are you not gonna actually explain why it's bad? You've been to Camden, you've been to Somalia, you've been to World War II Germany, and now you're at the final boss. Detroit. The polar bear stages as a whole can be the bleakest prospect for any of the collectible challenges across... Gash. But Tilt Panic specifically is undeniable proof of how much of a spec we are in the universe and how meaningless we are. You've not only got the superpowered Ted Bundy AI, but you also have this drunk ice cube that makes moving around ten times harder than it needs to be. You know what? The camera angle shits me off too. You have no idea how many attempts I completely muffed because I charged directly off the edge of the damn ice when I swear I should have been making contact. Why can't the camera angle be a little bit higher up? I'm not a child standing next to a table looking at chocolate cake. 
also, 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 depending on where the tilt is leaning, it can make your charge stronger or weaker. So if you're unlucky enough to be on the lowest dipping point of the tilt and all of the players come at you at once, that's it. It's all over. Almost comically quickly. And that will happen a lot more than not, because guess what? If all the players are always going after you, then all of their weight tilts the stage towards you by default, meaning you're already at the bottom of the tilt and you've already lost. There are other players here, why aren't you fighting each other? What did I do? 